Now it's time to start the debate and housing affordability was the number one question that viewers wrote in to us about. We want to start with that. One viewer writing in, quote, Austin is unaffordable to many longtime residents who own their homes. We struggle to pay basic bills. A car draw has determined that Ms. Yanez Polito will get our first question. With that in mind, you focus your campaign a lot on creating affordable housing for people who are in the lowest income levels, who have the greatest need. But what about people of all income levels? We're talking about people like firefighters, teachers, and construction workers who are also struggling to make ends meet. Thank you so much for the question. I think this is an issue that is probably affecting 80% of Austinites, and that it really is the diverse community that I'm looking at when we address this issue. We can talk about the lowest income levels, but I think we really need to put numbers to that. I think most people in Austin are struggling to find a place to rent for less than $1,800 a month, and for many, more like 1100 to 1400 is more reasonable. Uh, if we look at what our teachers and firefighters are actually making, most of these public sector workers are making five-figure salaries, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, when you really look across the board. So it's a myth if we actually talk about middle-income housing and we're talking about producing units that are over $600,000, there are plenty of those in the market. If we're looking at uh, apartments that rent for $1,900, $2,000 and up, there are many uh, options there. And I think it's also to, important to remember that all of the additional development we've seen in the past few years was developed under the existing code, not these recent changes. Ms. Tobo, you were part of crafting Austin's strategic housing blueprint, but the city is behind on many of those goals in that blueprint. How would you get the city back on track, specifically focusing on affordability and making sure that people who live here can stay here and those who want to stay can stay as well? Yeah, thank you. Um, that's a very important plan and sets some goals, not just for the overall numbers, but also the the numbers at different economic levels. And so, um, as has been said, Austin has created more housing over the last couple of years than most other large cities in the nation. So we are doing well on housing production and that does predate any of the existing changes that the current council has just passed. But we need to be careful and to be really conscious of what so many in our community are facing. As I knock on doors throughout the city, many people who come to the door ex express that they're concerned they may not be able to stay in their neighborhood, in their home, whether they're renters or property owners. And so we need to continue to look for ways to increase our, housing, our affordable housing supply, absolutely. But we need to look at the overall bills that are impacting family budgets. And that ranges from utility bills, um, on down to transportation and childcare costs. And I've been a leader as a council member, was a leader in pushing back on those utility costs and urging affordable childcare and transportation solutions will do so as mayor. Mr. Mayor, we have a question for you. What steps have you taken to make it less expensive to rent or buy a house in Austin since you took over two years ago? Well, uh, 20, 22 months ago, almost two years ago now, when I came into office, we have, were stagnant in the city of Austin in terms of being able to make the kinds of changes that we knew we needed to make in order to be able to get more housing stock and get more affordable housing stock. We made affordability the first priority of the city and we have instituted changes that people didn't think we were ever going to see. We've, we've changed our land development code which had not had major changes in this area uh, since the mid 1980s. We made changes to the minimum lot size, which hadn't been changed since 1947 and were segregationist era types of uh, things that we needed to change. We made changes with regard to what we can now do with transit and we changed how the development services department works so that people are able to get their permits easier and build cheaper. In addition to that, we've instituted the Austin Infrastructure Academy so that more people can get into careers that will be family supporting at the same time and be able to afford to stay in Austin. Mr. Bowen, you were one of the plaintiffs in a lawsuit that undid Code Next, the city's efforts to loosen development restrictions aimed at increasing housing supply. Sir, how would you say that and why would you say Austinites should trust you in making our city more affordable? Well, I went uh, primarily the lawsuit for, for me was basically you violated my, my rights that are given to me through the state. The state said that we had the right to protest. We also had the right for notification. That was being taken away from us during the code neck process. It's also happened again in several other, process, in several other uh, changes that they've tried to do. Um, as for trust, all I can say is I'm out there fighting for your rights. 
I'm fighting for my rights as long as, and, and also for yours. You need to understand what those rights are that are given to you and that they are not to be taken lightly by somebody else that's trying to silence you if, that, if it's going to impede upon your property or going to impede on what you may want to do later on. So the concept was really basically, I, I served for 20 years to protect those rights. And that was a state law, and the city had no right to violate that state law. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Mr. Greco, this next question is directed toward you. Your campaign website says, quote, we need a laser focus on affordability, and it loosely touches on rent and mortgage assistance. What exactly is your plan for housing affordability? That's right. Th thank you, um, Tom and Jennifer. Um, as a longtime nonprofit director, community organizer, former high school teacher, Affordability has been at the center of my agenda. And in the last 30 years, being in Austin, we have become the fastest growing city for millionaires. Our income inequality has increased, and over the last decade, our percentage of black and Latino residents has decreased. And this has happened since the mayor was first elected office in the late 90s. I think he bears a large part of the responsibility for this problem. We need to invest in affordable housing, rental and mortgage assistance, housing for those experiencing homelessness, and the 30% of homes that are bought by institutional investors, over a third of our homes, by private equity, LLCs, that are driving up the cost of living. That's why we need to give families a fighting chance with rental assistance, down payment assistance, mortgage assistance, assistance in buying ADUs, okay? That happened before home, and I was open to the land use changes, and it's gonna be a challenge after home as well. So let's give families a fighting chance.